What is up guys for coming at you with a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile and today we're doing an updated look at my familiar Possessed Charmer deck for 2020 in the month of June. Now this is of course is right before the structure deck is coming out next month in Japan. No word on whether it's coming to the TCG but I want to show you guys the list I'm currently playing as I'm testing a bunch of the new cards. I'm having a lot of fun with this particular list. For those of course we will be running proxies as they're not out in the OCG yet let alone the TCG and of course there was one other card that was revealed but we don't know the effects of it yet so I think it's a quick play spell uh, so that's obviously not going to be in this list. Now if you guys know what that card does let me know in the comments below and like give me a link to the actual translation because I'm really keen to test that one out as well. If you like the video remember to like and subscribe and leave a comment below with your thoughts on the structure deck in general in terms of reprints, the cards coming in and this list in general. Without further ado guys let's jump into it and hopefully you guys do enjoy it. Starting things off with our monsters we have two copies of each of the familiar possessed charmers. Win, area, uh, heater and Orsa. Now obviously I was thinking of bumping Orsa up to three and Heater down to one with the new of, co of course Awakened Possessed Earth Pet which is able to search out and bring Charmers back and able to plus you pretty hard uh, and the fire version of that being kind of less less than ideal but then at the end of the day I'm still happy with two of everything of course you still want to be able to search the water and the wind pets with your field spell which can actually make Running to each of them, very, very nice. And having, of course, access to as many attributes as possible is always very good. Now, of course, I don't run Dark or Lena. Lena especially because I have Fairy Tale Luna, which is able to, on normal summon, go and search for any spellcaster you want from your deck with 1850 attack. And then, of course, she has that nice quick effect where she can target opponents through your opponent controls and force your opponent to send a copy of that monster from, your, from their deck or extra deck to the graveyard to negate the effect. And if they don't, you get to bounce. Uh, both Luna and that monster, which gives you an extra normal summon for Luna next turn to search another Charmer, as well as giving you a nice interruption for your opponent's plays, which can be really, really good, especially if they're like making links as extenders and they're gonna use that link later. Of course, you can use that to bounce the link and then they have to start again from scratch. As for Dark, Dark doesn't really have any synergy with the deck other than being a Charmer. Uh, he's a Dark, so he's super easy to super poly, so, and Konami really doesn't want to acknowledge him as part of the archetype anyway. Uh, moving on to the pets, we have two copies of Ranru and two copies of Gigabyte. This is pretty standard from the last list. Uh, they have the special summon claws, so or if you have a spellcaster, you can summon them from your hand. Uh, you can only control one of each of them, and when they destroy a bell or card effect, they float. So Gigabyte will summon another pet with 1500 attack and 200 defense from your deck, and Ranru will do the same, but for one from your graveyard. So it's really nice how they float into each other as well. Uh, of course, with cards like Unpossessed, you're able to have uh, Charmers come out from the deck as well because of the way that card works, so it's nice and you there. Easy to special summon them, easy to make links, easy to make rank fours, easy to go ahead and make the new uh, Earth Pet, which is why we run two copies of Nefarious Archfeather of Nefariousness. Of course, being reprinted in the structure deck, these guys are a bit hard to find. I run two copies of this now, swapping out the Nari Fire, just because you really want to be able to go into the new version of the Earth Pet. This does have a float ability where it can bring itself back from the grave in your opponent's end phase by destroying one of your monsters. So you can use that to destroy your Gigabyte or your Ranru, then get them to float and then bring this back. And there is some definitely nice combos between these three. Of course, Inari Fire seems to have the least synergy out of all the pets with the other pets. It's obviously not as good upgraded form. That's why we don't run it. Two copies of Awakened Possessed uh, Archfeather of the Ferrisness. This guy can be special summoned from your hand or deck by sending a level four uh, spellcaster and a level four lower earth monster from your field to the graveyard. Now you don't have to use nefariousness but you definitely want to because he and any charmer or any spellcaster will make this when this guy is special summoned by his own effect you can summon a level four lower monster from your graveyard and then when he's sent from the field to the graveyard you can search for any possessed spell or trap or the grand the earth spiritual art trap which again i don't play because it's kind of janky unless it works out to work in some build i guess uh, the ability to search out your possessed spell and traps is really great. The reason why this guy is better than the Earth one is he's able to bring a monster back from your grave, which you can then use with him to link someone that just to make sure this guy gets into the graveyard because he will not get the search off until he hits the graveyard. So you want to be doing that as quickly as possible. The fire one also has the search clause, but does not have a special summon. It's like you burn an opponent's based on attack of a monster. So depending on your matchup, it, you may want to side one in, but definitely you want to be manning two of the Earth Pet. Last monsters, three copies of Ash. You can run Veilers as well if you want to, if you have space. Ash is just a good card. Moving on to the spells, we have three copies of Awakening of the Possessed, best card in the deck. 
All your monsters gain 300 attack for each attribute that you have. When a spellcaster monster is normal or special summoned to your side of the field, as long as it has 1850 attack, you get to draw a card. Of course, that's a once per turn. The other effect is, of course, your familiar possessed and charmer monsters cannot be destroyed by card effects. This does hurt you a little bit in the sense that your Archfiend pet cannot destroy your charmers to bring itself back, but most of the time you don't want to destroy your charmers. So it is nice protection, of course. They're not protected from targeting and they're not protected from being banished or shuffled. But being having at least destruction protection is really nice. Three copies of their field spell, Grand Spiritual Art Ichirin. Now I did say I didn't like this field spell in the past. That was before uh, before they released they revealed this. So uh, its effect is once per turn you can reveal a spellcaster type monster from your hand. Then search your uh, your deck for a monster with 1500 attack and 200 defense. That's the same attribute. Add it to your hand, and if you do, put the revealed charmer back in your deck. Of course, this is a fantastic effect for this deck as it gets rid of dead brick to level four charmers that you can only summon one of a turn. So you can get rid of one to go ahead and search out another pet. And that's why I'm thinking of running three Orsa, just to really help me get to the Archreader of the Fairiesness. So you can go ahead and get to the upgraded form just to do some searching. Its other effect is also really good. Once per turn, if you have a Spellcaster monster with 1500 defense on the field, you can negate a monster effect your opponent activates. Now it is a mandatory negate, so it will be the first thing they activate. But if you can find a way to cheese out your Spellcaster at the right time, you can negate the right thing to just shut down their combo. So this is a great field spell uh, for Charm now obviously it's not searchable uh, by the archetype as of what we have yet hopefully that new spell can search it but you don't really need it and two copies of desires just for our uh, draw spell banish 10 draw two obviously three copies of cold by the grave able to stop our monsters getting ashed and being able to stop our monster opponent's monsters going off in grave terraforming just in case because you know you do want you would like the field spell you don't need the field spell last two spells monster born and double or nothing self-explanatory because we're playing rank four Moving on to traps, first off we have three copies of the new trap, Teamwork of the Possessed. It has two effects, you can only use each effect once per turn and only once per turn. First effect, you can special summon a spellcaster monster with 1500 defense from your hand or graveyard in face up attack or face down defense, of course depending on which version you want to play. I don't know if anyone's going to be playing the level 3 charmers, but hey this supports it anyway. Of course if you do, you can destroy one card on the field if you have two or more attributes, which is a great card for this archetype. They want you to have multiple attributes on the field and here's a card that rewards you for doing that. This is a great way to work in with the field spell that you can cheat out your spellcaster at the right time to negate a specific monster effect. Its other effect is also fantastic. You can banish it from your graveyard to place a possessed spell or trap from your graveyard to your field in your spell and trap card zone face up. So if they pop your unpossessed or more importantly, if they pop your awakening of possessed, you can banish this to bring your awakening possessed back and your monsters are gonna keep their attack points. This is a fantastic card. You could easily run it at two and run a third judgment, which is probably the more ideal version, but I like running this at three for now, but it may change later down the track. Three copies of unpossessed. This is something you could probably run it to now if you wanted to, but I just like seeing it because it does have that nice float effect. Its first effect is your charmer. Monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. And if you're familiar possessed monster with battle an opponent's monster, it gains 800 attack during damage calculation only. If a monster or monsters would be destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a spellcaster monster with 1500 defense, face up attack, or face down defense whose attribute is different to the original attribute of the destroyed monster or monsters, or one of them at least. Uh, really good card. Helps you float. Of course, if your pets die, you can float off your pets and you get a charmer as well. Gives you extra attack boost, which can be relevant in certain situations as your monsters get really big, but this can make things even bigger. And the last two cards in the main deck, we have two copies of Solemn Judgment. You can feel free to run three Judgment instead of running like a second, a third uh, Teamwork of the Possessed. It's up to you at the end of the day. Judgment, just a really good card. Moving on to the extra deck, we have one copy of each of the four charm links. Sadly, not prismatic. They are a bit, uh, they are quite pricey, especially seeing as this deck is mostly for fun. They all have the same summon clause where they require one monster of their own attribute and one monster of any type. They can summon a monster from your opponent's graveyard that's the same attribute as them to a zone they point to in defense mode. And if they're destroyed and sent to the graveyard by opponent's card effect or by battle, I believe, you can search out a monster of their attribute with 1500 or less defense. So. You don't really use them for that effect. We mostly use them as beat sticks because they count as familiar possessed as well as charmers. So they get both the effects of uh, unpossessed, which is great. Uh, also, you can use them to help get this into the graveyard. So you basically will be summoning this um, as easily as quickly as possible and then you'll be bringing a monster back and you'll be using this and the monster you bring back to make one of your links Just so this goes to the graveyard so you can search now Of course you do neg a little bit But you do get to get something like unpossessed or team look at the possessed which can be absolutely fantastic So you definitely want to be running one of these in each of these 
One copy of Nightmare Phoenix just to remove back row. And then we're running Tra Trapeze Magician, I think, is our only spellcaster in the extra deck just because it allows one of our spellcasters to attack twice. Our spellcasters get pretty big, so this is definitely something you could utilize. A lot of the time, it's probably better to just have two spellcasters out because they're going to have two charms out because they're going to have more attack points um, than this, than negging and going into this. But still, this guy can be pretty good. 2,500 bait stick does get power from Waking and Possessed, does give the light attribute. And you'll notice that there are literally no darks in this deck whatsoever. Uh, we're playing Dweller, just for that Graveyard Negate, of course, and we does get the extra 500 attack points, possibly, as we do play four Waters in the deck, so it is uh, achievable. Uh, in terms of stun, of course, more stun with Babuska. Specific decks die to this card. Obviously, Link decks don't, but you definitely want to be making this against specific decks. Uh, Tornado Dragon and Lightning Chidori are also good interruptions. Ch Tornado Dragon to remove back row, Chidori to remove face up and set cards can be really good. Uh, Utopia Package... Lightning, double, and regular Utopia. Of course, uh, if you lose your double or nothing, you need a boss monster, so you can make lightning. If your double gets ashed, you can make lightning. So very straightforward there, and it only takes up one extra slot in your ED. And the last two cards we have in the ED are Bohemian Shark and Totally Awesome, just in case you get to that situation where you do have two waters on turn one, and you can't search, and you really want to set up a negate. Hey, you have Toad. Toad's in the gate. Toad in the Judgment is better than, well, a Judgment and nothing else. So the chance of you getting this is not super consistent, but we do have enough waters in the deck. I mean, it's just two waters, and we do play four waters in the deck, so there is a chance that you can make it, and we have the space anyway. But that is it, guys, for the deck profile. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If there's anything I've missed that might work really well, let me know. Uh, let me, of course, let me know your thoughts about the Charmer Structure deck, if you're excited as I am for it. And if you like the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to sub to the channel. We did recently hit 300 subscribers, and I am super grateful for that. My next milestone is 400. I would love to reach there by the end of the year. So if you haven't already and you like the content on this channel, please feel free to give me a subscription. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you for my next video.